All right, everyone. Well, club quarantine was an international digital phenomenon. Now, we all remember being on lockdown during COVID and constantly looking for ways to safely alleviate the boredom. And then one night, a DJ saved the day by creating the largest online party that I've ever heard of via Instagram. Now, we're joined by the man who made it happen, Derek Jones, but you can call him D-Nice. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Tati. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm super excited to have you here and to talk with you and what you're bringing to Detroit, which yes. we're going to get to in a minute, but talk to us about club quarantine. What made you decide to just start D DJing on, on IG? Were you bored like the rest of us or what, what, what were you trying to accomplish? Well, it wasn't necessarily that I was bored. My daughter was living out here. She was going to uh, Detroit Country Day and I was quarantined in Los Angeles and I was missing my kid and, and I was trying to find ways to just stay connected to people. I started playing music online and next thing you know, five days later, it was like the biggest party in the world. It was crazy. Everybody like had timers ready for the party <laughs> to start, right? Now, who came up with Club Quarantine? I feel like it just, the name, right? The say. name is funny. The name was um, given to me, <clears throat> excuse me, by a singer named Jay Valentine who works ah, with Tank. Okay. And uh, he, he called me up one day. I was calling it homeschool. And uh, he said, you should call it Club Quarantine. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, that's a perfect name. But uh, this was like a once in a lifetime phenomenon, right? Oh, absolutely. So what was it like to see people like former First Lady Michelle Obama, Puff Daddy, Rihanna, Mark Zuckerberg join the party? Well, for me, it was, um, I, I tell people like this, it's the first time that I invited them to, to my party because I would DJ for all of them. You know, I DJ mm -hmm. for the Obamas and I, I've played for Rihanna and I've played events for Facebook. But this was the first time that, it was, that everyone was coming to my party. So, of course, it was exciting. Were, were you kind of tripping out, though, at some of the people who showed up? I was tripping out at, I, I'll tell you a couple of people. The fact that The Rock was in there, mm -hmm. you know, The Rock was always coming in listening to me. Um, the first Lady, the former First Lady, you know, that's, that's family. So that, I mean, I was happy that she joined in. But the other ones, I was really excited. Like, wow, can't believe they even know who I am. Yeah, oh, everybody knows who you are now. Well, that's <laughs> for sure. Now, I'm really excited that this is migrating from a digital experience yes. to a real life experience. You've already started touring with it. Yes. So what made you decide that, like, we need to take this on the road? Well, one, I wanted to give people, you know, the same kind of experience that we had, you know, virtually, but we were doing it together in person. And uh, mm -hmm. we did the first one and it sold out immediately. And now we're just taking it all over the country, all over the world, actually. Yeah. And now, so what does it mean to be bringing it here to Detroit to the iconic Aretha Franklin Amphitheater? Well, Detroit is like second home for me. You know, I spent a lot of time here. Obviously, I have some family here with my, my daughter and, um, and a lot of friends here. Mm -hmm. So I've been coming here to this town for so long, so it, it means a lot to, to bring it to the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, and this is your only Midwest city, right? This, this is tour? my only Midwest city. Detroit, baby, the Detroit, D. yes. So now that you've you know become this phenomenon, you're already doing your own thing, and those who knew, knew, but now everybody knows who you are. Are you, like, super cool in the eyes of your kids now? Oh, with my kids, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I'll take that back. I'm not super cool in the eyes <laughs> of my kids. You know, when I was I was playing, um, I was co-hosting New Year's Rock and Eve, mm -hmm. and I was so excited to like play it back. And my daughter looked at me. I, I was trying to get the family to watch, and she she looked at me. She was like, "You're so full of yourself. Why do oh. we need to watch this?" <laughs> I was like, "This is cool, kid. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, definitely." So, what else is on the horizon for you? Really, just my shows. You know, like yeah. I do a lot of shows. The next, obviously, the next big one is here in Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Kennedy Center Opera House coming up. We have uh, Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have Carnegie Hall next Wednesday. Very cool. So, yes, yeah, so playing, taking club quarantine all over. That's just right. Just some iconic venues. And we will see you back here in Detroit August 5th, right? What up, doe? What up, doe? What up, nice. doe? So give Detroit a shout-out. Everyone's going to want to hear from Come you. Come on now. Detroit, yeah. I love Detroit. It's so good to be here. Yes, and we love having you. We appreciate you taking the time to join us on Live in the D this morning. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you for having yes, me here. Yes, D-nice.